right. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. No? So thank you for uh, staying here. No? So I know uh, it's been late, right? Quite a long uh, day for us. Right. So uh, too much information, too much insights, right? Uh, so here, so so uh, basically, my topic for today is about deep stability pipeline, right? So what is it all about? So meaning, uh, since we are doing digital transformation, right? So applications, we're running, uh, we're running applications through on-premise, the virtual or the public cloud, right? So there's a lot of visibility gaps, right? Or uh, may say there's a lot of traffic uh, blind spots all over. Uh, if we are going uh, or we're doing digital transformation, so we need to see everything. We need to consider the security, right? So let me just uh, take a look back, right? And uh, just a quick history about data center evolution. So are you familiar with this kind of setup, right? So we have different um, appliances, network devices, and of course our applications, right? Running on top of this infrastructure, right? And of course we have different teams who manages this uh, infrastructure. So we have different tool set, as we call it, right? For security, for network, and these tools are connected, right? Or direct interfacing with different uh, segments in the network, right? And then create uh, complexities, uh, like uh, like I said earlier, traffic blind spots. Of course, there's a cost implication, right? And of course, the flexibility, which is very critical in terms of digital transformation, right? So for us, we want to, simpli uh, we want to simplify things, right? So we get the traffic easily, and then we can feed the traffic to different sets of tools, right, that you have. Right, and of course, uh, our technologies, our infrastructures are constantly evolving over time. Right, so we need to uh, right migrate different workloads, right, our critical workloads to the cloud, and of course, it possesses different challenges also. Right, and then of course, five G is there, and of course, uh, don't forget about the IoT, OT technologies and infrastructure that we have, right, in our organization. So, uh, because uh, we need to consider to secure this infrastructure because probably this is the point of entry, right, of that attacker, right, or gateway uh, that can infiltrate our infrastructure, right? And of course, zero trust. Zero trust is not a product, but a process. There are certain level layers that right, we need to consider in, uh, in performing or deploying a zero trust architecture in our infrastructure. So the foundation of a zero trust architecture is all about the visibility. So we need to have a full visibility if we need, uh, if we are uh, successful, successful in deploying a zero trust architecture in our environment, and of course, don't forget our um, data center. So along the way, so we need to upgrade. We need to, um, of course, to uh, move from 10G, 40G, 100G, right, to accommodate uh, the uh, top heavy load process of our applications, right. So uh, with these uh, infrastructures, technologies that that we have, right. So the common thing here is about gaining full visibility and gaining or doing more with less, right? So I will jump on the hybrid cloud uh, infrastructure, right? So actually this was contacted last year by Prosen Sullivan, right? So uh, most of the respondents here saying that uh, they're going towards a hybrid cloud infrastructure. But on the other hand, so 20% of the respondents saying that they're not sticking into one platform or to one uh, cloud provider. So they're going towards a multi-cloud approach, right? And then the other hand, right? So uh, the rest of the respondents saying in 12 months time, uh, they will move into a hybrid cloud infrastructure or a multi-cloud uh, uh, infrastructure, right? So, Having said that, so hybrid cloud, uh, there's a lot of challenges that we need to consider. So one of them is uh, cloud security, right? And of course, uh, as a cloud practitioner, as a cloud architect, so I'm seeing organization uh, struggling to protect their applications in the cloud, right? From malwares, from ransomware, from log 4 etc. et cetera. So the reason behind it is because uh, there's, uh, there's a thing that we call shared responsibility model in the cloud. So what's, uh, what's uh, shared responsibility is all about? So there's two places, right? If you are um, moving our workloads to the cloud, so there's uh, security of the cloud and security in the cloud. So what's the difference between these two, right? 
So if you say about security of the cloud, right? So for instance, if you're choosing this uh, vendor A, right, or this cloud provider, so they are responsible for the security of the physical data center of each regions. And also they are, uh, they are the, uh, responsible for securing the operating uh, or the host operating system or the hypervisors no, that the service operates. On the other hand, so we have this uh, security in the cloud. So that's our responsibility, our customer, or to us, our customer, right? So anything right uh, below here, anything below here, so the cloud provider is responsible for the security, right? Anything above is our responsibility. So for the guest OS, right? For the applications that uh, we need to install, right, inside the cloud. So that's our, respons that's our responsibility to secure this uh, data, right? the data of ours. Right, so why deep observability pipeline? So what, uh, uh, what is, is uh, what deep observability pipeline is all about, right? Right, so deep, so uh, we can have a difference between knowing versus guessing, right? So we can harness powerful insights through network, right? And then we get those data and then we can uh, deliver it, right, to our tools or observability tools, right? So pipeline, so meaning we have uh, like a bridge, right? So a bridge like, uh, connecting to uh, two worlds, right? Your data center, your workloads, your applications, right? And then uh, traversing to the observability tools that you have, right? So, right? So what's our, what are the trends in the cloud now? So especially for cloud security, right? So here, so we have different uh, groups, right? For DevOps, for cloud ops, for net ops, et cetera, right? And of course, they have different uh, tools, they have different telemetries, that cannot marry together or cannot collaborate uh, to one another, right? So this is where the no, observability pipeline uh, comes into play, right? So we, get, uh, we harness the network intel coming from the network, right, through metadata, and then we put it together with MELT. So now, so we can have the full picture, right? Uh, we can see the full uh, context of what we are trying to run in the, in the cloud, right? So. Going back uh, to the MELT, right, or network visibility. So some of the observability tools using MELT, right, or metrics, events, or logger traces, right, which is incomplete, right. So as you can see here, no, to the screen. So uh, this telemetry source, right. So uh, this is this only um, uh, informations that we can see, right, using this uh, telemetry source that we call MELT, right. So if we put uh, network intelligence through metadata. So we can have uh, the overall picture, right? So meaning uh, we can see unmanaged hosts, uh, we can see uh, the actual activity, what's really happening, right? And of course, if you say about network packets, it cannot be altered, right, compared to logs, right? So here, so just to give you some context on what really, uh, how, it, how it works, right? So of course, uh, you have your observability tools and then uh, they're trying to get the telemetry source right, through MELT. And we can see this dashboard, right? And then if we put network intel through metadata, right, together with MELT, so we can add another layer of information or dashboard, right? And can unlock different use case for security and for network, right? So we can have a virtual detection uh, use case or we can have troubleshooting use case for network teams. All right, so if you want to see uh, some action uh, about our deep observability pipeline, so first, of course, uh, we want to choose your preferred um, tools, right? And you can create your dashboard and then you can select different templates. You can choose from, from uh, compliance, from network troubleshooting, uh, from, um, uh, uh, from um, what do you call this, uh, evolving security, right, or improving security posture, right? So you can select different uh, templates that you can use, right, with your current observability tools. All right, so this use case is about security, right? So actually uh, using our metadata, so we can detect different uh, rogue applications, right, from P2P, from crypto, uh, crypto mining, and of course, some of the rogue login activities that are currently happening with your environment, right? And another use case for security, so we can detect different uh, vulnerabilities like 
uh, we can uh, we can see Wix Cypress, right? We can see those applications, those servers are using self-signed certificates. And of course, those certificates are about to expire, right? So from this, so we can have a proactive approach, right? Uh, before it reaches our end users, right? So another use case is about security also, right? So for, uh, uh, from the attacker standpoint, so they want to hide their identity, right? Using uh, non-standard ports, for example. So here, so you can see uh, DNS traffic over non-standard uh, non port 53, and some other, they're using SSH traffic over SSL, right? So they're hiding their identity, so uh, with our metadata, so we can inject this um, information, these dashboards, so um, our security teams or network teams can detect, right, or to, uh, to mitigate uh, rapidly, right, uh, this kind of threat. And of course, uh, for the network use case, so of course, uh, for the application and network standpoint, right, so we can identify what's the slowness of the applications, what's the slowness of the network. Right, so from our metadata, so we can uh, bring different um, informations pertaining to applications, uh, errors or application slowness. Right, so for round trip time, uh, for some uh, for zero, zero errors, for example, right. So here, so we can uh, eliminate those uh, pinpoints, right. So we can identify here or we can proactively uh, mitigate what's the problem. It's not a network team, it's not a network issue, it's not a application issue but we can uh, further um, select what's the right action right, for us to improve right, our um, application um, service or customer experience. So I think that's my last slide, right? So thank you very much, everyone. So if you have any questions, if you have any detailed uh, information that you want, so I'm here on the sides, uh, please, feel, uh, please feel, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you.